why are Kickstarters like buses? Because you wait ages for one, and then loads come along all at once. And also there's a good chance you'll get robbed. I've got Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle City Fall for you, which is quite a big Kickstarter. There's about 10 boxes there, lots of expansions. And tomorrow I've just had a note that Super Fantasy Brawl is going to arrive, so I'll get straight on that and do an unboxing. Um, we've also got Batman Animated Series, which is the same system as Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And we'll have a Jurassic World before the end of the year. Maybe even Zombicide uh, Second Edition, so that's good. Lots of stuff for you. I do promise I'm not just doing unboxings. Um, I've got lots of other stuff in the pipeline. I've got 3D printed buildings, I've got uh, water effects, and I've got a super secret series that I'm hoping you will love. If any of that sounds interesting, like and subscribe and hit the little bell and you'll get notified when all these things come out. Thanks very much. Full disclosure, this is my second time filming this. The first time I was trying something new and the footage didn't save. So, here we go again. Right, this is Changes Constant, which seems to be the main box, even though the Kickstarter was called City Fall. Changes Constant is the main game here. All these big boxes are standalone games, so they can be played on their own or they can be played in conjunction with all the others, which is quite cool. I've loved Turtles since I was a wee boy. I'm actually a child of the 80s, so I remember the classic series when it first came around. And I just I just love it. I mean, it had action, it had comic relief, and it was the best thing on. So I'm really excited for this. I don't even know if kids still play with Turtles these days, but my son has recently got into them, so I'm pretty excited for this. Right, so... First things first, we've got the rule book. Now this tells you all about all the different cards and things like that, and everything that you should find in the box. So we've got all the tokens, special move cards, villain ability cards, villain sheets, ally cards, initiative cards, which tell you who's going to move first. Um, car tokens. There's actually a lot of interesting stuff in this rule book. A lot of interesting rules. Look, it says car tokens are slow terrain and large throwing objects, which is quite interesting. So there might be cars flying around. So this system's called OGS, which is Adventures Universal Game System. And it's the IDW system, so there's been a previous uh, Turtles game with the OGS system. There's Batman the Animated Series uh, Kickstarter, which is should be delivered in the next month or two. And I believe Avatar is coming as well. But that's not even been on Kickstarter yet, so it'll be a year or two before that comes out. So you can see the villain sheets and the villain ability cards, initiative cards and cooperative mode villain sheets so that's all the bits laid out we'll get to that later I just wanted to point out a bit in these rules because it sounds really interesting it sounds like there's a lot that you can do things like cameras so ca uh, CCTV cameras move about every turn if the CCTV cameras see you then the effect of this is different depending on what scenario you're playing. So I thought that was really cool. And small throwing objects, large throwing objects, grindable lines, so I take it that's grinding on the skateboards for the turtles. Maybe make you move a bit um, quicker. So, all in all, very cool. Quite excited to play it. I'm going to be doing a solo playthrough to show you how it plays. I think that's the easiest way to get it done rather than try to rely on someone, especially in these times when no one can come round to my house. So here we've got Adventure Comic Part 1 and 2. So the Adventure Comics are like mission books. So 
it starts off with the tutorials. So in this, it recommends the heroes, Raf Leonardo, Raphael, Donatel, Donatello and Michelangelo. And tells you the objectives. Heroes win if Alapex receives a KO token. Villains, the villain wins at the end of round 6. Victory. The turtles interrupt Alapex's training session, but she manages to break away with a handful of recruits es escaping the subway. Uh, and the action for that is proceed to tutorial Join the Foot. Alapex and the Foot manage to outrun the turtles and escape to the streets above. Proceed to the tutorial Join the Foot. So this shows you how it should all be set out. So you've got your Foot Ninjas there. You've got Thugs, Brawler Thugs and Alapex. So now it would take you on to the next mission, so that's kind of the same thing. So it's got a different layout, more thugs and uh, ninjas and things like that. So, and it would just continue on and on. Let's see what the victory conditions are. So it would go to the same mission again, re reject roundup. So it would just go on and on and take you through a campaign. I imagine at some point there will be branching ones. So it will take you to either one mission or another, depending on the victory conditions, whether they're met or not. So that's just the same. That's just more battles and things like that. This is a bit about a micro-series, so it's kind of like you're playing out your own episodes. It's awesome. So here we have the minis. We'll just go through this. We, we won't actually go through the minis yet. I will show you the rest of the stuff that's in the box, and then we'll go into the minis. There's lots of good quality tokens, pizza tokens, double sided, so you get rotten ones and good ones, you get KO tokens, you've got all sorts of things, all very high quality, those are good, give them a wee punch test, yep, pop out very nicely, and they also clip back in as well, which is good. So there you've got CCTV cameras like I showed you earlier. There's there they are. And on this one we've got the throwable cars. You see them down here? Here we've got the playing boards. So as you saw in the missions, these boards all fit together. You put the character tokens or models on them and you build up the level that's in the scenario. So double sided. Very nice looking, feel very thick. Foot stinks, mine certainly do. Is more than one member of the foot called the feet? Who knows? So th there's a junkyard with smashed cars in it. And the sewers, those look really good. Very nice lighting on those ones. The whole feel of this game is just quality so far. I'm loving it. There's Ninja Pizza. That features in a lot of episodes. I know because I'm re-watching all the classic series with my son. In one series, there is 47 episodes. And it costs about £10. So... If you're looking for some value, then pick up the classic series on iTunes or something like that. Here we've got villain control boards, which is basically a cheat sheet for villains. There's one for cooperative mode and competitive mode. So it just tells you all the things that happen at various points in the game. Because the rules are quite complex, there's a cheat sheet for playing the game. So it tells you all the what all the colours of terrain mean. I take it the colours correspond with these boxes. So there's yellow ones, so that would be slow terrain. There's blue ones, so that would be elevated terrain. Fits in quite nicely. And there's just a, a general cheat sheet for everything. So I'll be keeping them around when I'm playing. So there's some base rings for the good guys, I suppose. 
Like I say, this was opened previously because I tried to film it before. So here's the hero sheet. So you get Casey Jones, Michelangelo, Raphael, Donatello, Leonardo, and then you've got the villain sheets, which give you all their abilities. So hero sheets look like that. Villain sheets look like that. And you get loads of them. Alapex, Foot Clan Ninja, Baxter Stockman. So there's different backs to them. So these are ability cards for the heroes. So there's Leaping Strike. Leo leaps up to three spaces in a straight line, then he may make an attack plus two melee strike. Double Slash. Leo makes an attack plus four, plus one die per extra katana spent. Melee Strike. Probing attack. While the card is active, Leo may re-roll his battle dice for free once per melee strike. So you get the idea. There's cards for Raphael. Hurl Sai. It's a classic one. Cool but rude. I'm not going to sing the song. And there's Michelangelo. Double Chuck. Low Blow. Party Dude. Goon Gala for Casey Jones. So that, those were the hero ones. So the hero ones all have the pictures on the back. Let me just get these. Casey Jones, Michelangelo, Raphael, Donatello, and Leonardo. So you'll have no problem differentiating that. And these are the villain ability cards. They just all look like that with Shredder, Bebop, Rocksteady and the Mousers on the back. Right, I need to find some initiative cards so that you can see the difference. There's none in there. Those are all villain cards. I have to say there's a ton of these cards. So these ones are ally cards. So you get a wee ability for an ally that you get. So there's evil allies as well so it works both ways. There's Shredder. Competitive mode, the players, the villain player's hand size is increased by one. Cooperative mode, minion figures receive hit plus one. For Splinter, this card remains in play until discarded. Once during this battle, players may discard Splinter to allow each hero to trade out one of their special move cards for one of their special move cards they didn't select this battle. So he's kind of a support character as an ally. And these ones are initiative cards, so in cooperative mode, these are used for deciding who goes first. So I take it, everyone that's in the battle, you put them in a deck and then choose one blindly from the deck and you can see whose move it is. This is about box one of ten, so we've got a lot to go through. Nice themed round tracker. I like it. Now we've got dice for all the different colours of guys. So you've got all these dice. There's black, blue for Leonardo, purple Donatello, orange Michelangelo, red for Raphael and a white one with green detailing so you can roll these dice and get all different results there's a yin and yang sign there's a skateboard now there's one skateboard on Raphael's dice and two on Michelangelo's and a single one as well so each dice is different depending on who's rolling it so that's really cool that's box one, apart from the miniatures of course. I'll take that away and then we can concentrate on the minis. Now I'm going to do something a bit different with these minis. I'll show you roughly what they look like, but I'm going to take better pictures and videos of them so that you can see them up close because no one wants to see out of focus miniatures um, held up to the camera. We shall go for the good guys first of all. There's Michelangelo. Looking good. There's Raphael. Mm, the uh, detail in his mouth is a bit soft. It looks like an old person that's forgotten to put their false teeth in. But the shell detail is really good. The size a bit bent, but probably can't be helped shipping it from China. There's Leonardo. These guys are actually really small, but I think they'll be really nice to paint. 
a lot of them will be getting the contrast treatment because it will just paint rank and file really quickly. So that will be the aim, get them painted and on the board as soon as possible. In my playthrough they won't be painted though because I've got other things on my tabletop at the moment. So there's Donatello. Let me know if you'd like me to work out a wee tutorial for these guys and then I can uh, do another video for that. Casey Jones, he looks awesome. I love his pose. He's got all his uh, sports weapons, sorry, equipment in his backpack and a golf bag on his back. So, awesome. Splinter, one of the smallest miniatures in here. Baxter Stockman is a human. I'm sure everyone knows that he eventually becomes Baxter Stockman the fly. A foot ninja. These guys will be getting the black and purple treatment, just like the classic show. We've got a brawler. Lots of these guys. Um, who else have we got? We've got a brawler here. So that's a brawler. That one's a gun thug. And this one is Old Hob. So I think I'll end up with about six of him in various poses throughout this unboxing. A wee mouser. And it is wee. It is tiny. Absolutely minuscule. And we've got the Mega Mouser, which is the big guy. So I bet you I could fit a mouser in the Mega Mouser's mouth and I could. That's how big this guy is. Not much detail on them, so it'll be easy to paint up. And like I say, these these guys will be getting the basic treatment. I can't be giving absolute attention to hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of models because there are hundreds of models in this Kickstarter. That's the only problem with backing Kickstarters. You always end up with tons of models. And how I'm going to paint them, I have no idea. So here we've got Cityfall, which is the second big box in the uh, TMNT Kickstarter. So, lovely artwork on the box. Dark Leo. Now, I'm not too up on my modern Turtles lore, so I'm not too sure about Dark Leo and things like that. I know that you, there is a mode where you can play as the bad guys as the heroes. I'm looking forward to trying that one out. Sorry, I'll just give you a look at the back of the box first. So we've got 40 plastic miniatures, 23 dice, 183 cards, 31 oversized cards, 4 base clips, 8 double-sided map tiles, 286 tokens, 1 round tracker, 1 rule book, and 1 scenario book. There's a lot in this box. Let's get the top off. Same thing again, we've got the rule book. Let me just check if the printing's the same. Seems to be in the same, exactly the same format as the Changes Constant rule book. So I won't go through it again. No one will want to be bored by that. And we've got the City Fall Adventure comic. This is for battle setups and things. So we've got another tutorial campaign. Dockside Patrol. So same thing. You you win it, you go to the next mission. And you've got your setup and everything with all your different types of terrain in these boxes. I'm just actually trying to find a mission where you go into a different one. That's that's the end of it. So that's the books. Once again I'll put these minis to the side and we can look at them in detail afterwards. So we've got all the tokens, we've got cards, that looks like the Channel 6 news van there. We've got a hot dog, hot dog vans, we've got roadworks signs, benches, crates, we've got cameras. These look like some of the same token boards. So I suppose if you bought one or the other you'd want all the, the tokens. Lots and lots and lots of tokens. Same as before. Now we've got the boards. We'll have different boards here. It's a different scenario. So there's the, the street. Another street. And 
can't tell what that is. Is that a tank? Looks like a tank. Just an empty one. And there's the dock. That's nice. And that looks like the entrance to an office building. That looks like a lab. Sewer. And a bar. Lots of good looking tiles here. We've got exactly the same thing again. We've got the cheat sheets for villains and heroes. So I won't go over them. You've seen them before. Lots more cards. So Leonardo looks like a bad guy in this one. So let me just find Leonardo. He seems to be in the same team as Bebop and Rocksteady in this one because he's Dark Leo. Right, I'll put them to the side. You've seen them before. I'll show you the same again. We've got initiative cards for everyone. There's one for Splinter Sensei, Splinter Master. I don't know what the difference between them is yet, but I will certainly find out. So there's the villain move cards, villain ability cards. I don't know if there's any ally ones in here. Right, so Splinter, good guy. Slash, good guy. Old Hope, April, and Angel Bridge. So they are the good ones in this set. We've got the base rings, so red ones this time. And we have another round tracker. So we'll be able to choose round trackers. A Raphael one or a Splinter one. Oh! And there you go, there's Shredder on the other side. Didn't even look on the other side. And we have dice, so we've got purple ones, black ones with green writing, black ones with white writing, yellow ones with black writing, violet ones. So, same kind of deal. They're not all the same. Some are more suited to some characters than others. So I like that each character has its own personality depending on the dice that it has. That's a really cool touch. So we'll take a look at the minis now. There's a lot in here. There seems to be a lot more heroes and villains in here than the other box. But only one turtle. So we've got Dark Leo. So he's got a claw and a samurai sword. Or a katana, sorry. He'll be painted in, with uh, a black bandana. and Black and red, I think, are his colours. There's Shredder. You should be seeing high resolution videos of these miniatures at the moment because I don't want you to have to just see out of focus ones that I'm holding up. Angel Bridge. Karai, is that her name? We've got a foot soldier with, I'm not actually sure what that ninja weapon's called. And there's an, a ninja with these things. Six with pole arms. Although that one seems to be missing its its tip and it's not broken off, it's actually moulded. Don't know what happened there. Look at these wee guys with their, their hankies on their heads. We have April O'Neill in her cool suit. We've got Splinter again, tiny Splinter. Use him as a skaven. One of my favourites and one of my son's favourites is Bebop. I love his chainsaw. Old Hob again. Hun, Purple Dragon's leader. Got Slash. Now, I know I've also got an individual pack with a miniature of Slash in it, so I'll have two of them in, at the end. And last but not least in this box... We have Rocksteady, another favourite. He is actually massive compared to the rest of them. There's Rocksteady and Bebop together. Normally in the cartoon and things, they're, they're almost the same size. So it's refreshing to see uh, Rocksteady a lot bigger. Right, that's it for um, 
City Fall. We'll move on to Secret History of the Foot Clan. So in this one, 8 plastic miniatures, 6 hero specific dice, 27 cards, 9 character sheets, 3 double sided tiles, 1 scenario book and 10 tokens. So this is not a standalone, this is an expansion. So you'll need one of the bigger boxes to play with this. Because there's no rule book in it, is there? No, just a scenario book. So here we've got tokens. Got a stretch limo, a VW bus, and looks like a portal, probably to Dimension X, considering Krang's in this one. So we've got the adventure comic, which is the missions, of course. So what have we got here? That's interesting, no tutorial in this one, so you're expected to know how to play it by the time you, you get to this one. Still looks like the same branching thing, although I've not actually seen a branch yet in any of these. I'm sure there are some. So this one says after the end of that mission, congratulations players, you have learned part of the secret history of the Foot Clan. So here we've got ja uh, feudal Japan based tiles. So there's the inside of a house or a dojo or something like that outside in a Japanese village and that would join up like that so got lots and lots of tiles now all good stuff okay so we'll go on to the cards there's the the villain cards so Oroko Saki and Shredder they've each got their own cards Hamato Yoshi who of course is Splinter Foot Elite with their scary masks on. Foot Ninja. Another Shredder one. Krang. Iron Demon. So that's interesting. Krang's the green one, so I wonder if he's the hero in that scenario. And we've got cards. I will cut out your heart. So that's pleasant. My destiny is to conquer. Blessing from the Iron Demon. So we've got initiative cards. Shredder. Foot Elite. Foot Ninja. And we have these ally cards. So Hamato Sons. Anyone notice anything about that? Orange, blue, purple, red. Kitsune, Iron Demon, Professor Miller, Tang Shen. So we've got all those ones. We've got one of the ability cards for the baddies. And then we've got the all the individual ability cards. Shadow Warrior, that's for Hamato Yoshi. Makes an attack, plus four melee, strike, double hits count as triple hits. So there's more initiative cards. Hamato Sons, Hamato Yoshi, Kitsune, Krang, or Okusaki. All the dice in this are white. And we'll go through the minis. Krang. So he's got his brains in his tummy. We've got... Oroko Saki, Stroke Shredder, as a Japanese warrior. We've got Hamato Yoshi, the nice mini. There's a lot, I don't know if you can see this, but there's a lot of texture on these. So it looks like he's got wooden armour on. Very nice. And Hamato Sons, so here's one with nunchucks, looking suspiciously like Michelangelo. Raphael as a boy, as a human. Here's Leonardo. These poses are really nice, actually. I don't know if I'll ever get around to painting these particular guys because they're not turtles, so we'll see. So there's Donatello. And Kitsune. So that is Shadows of the Past. We're all done with that. So I'll move on to the five smaller boxes now. Able to see what's in them. These should all be a bit quicker, so just sit tight. We're nearly there. We've still got the stretch goals to go, however, which is the fun part. That's all the extra models you get. It's basically the, the good part about Kickstarter is when you back it, you get loads of extra stuff. You're probably still paying the same amount for it, but it's nice to feel like you're getting more value. So here we have Deviations Pack. Not a lot to it. Let's open it up. 
So there's still an adventure comic. It's actually got a bit of a comic in it. So just the same as the other adventure comics, we've got tons of missions. They have not skimped on the missions at all. So there's, there's lots of replayability and with lots of different um, different groups of heroes and villains. So that's awesome. So there's the deviations one. So this is all the Dark Turtles, Leonardo, Donatello, Raphael and Michelangelo. And they've got all the corresponding cards. And their baddies. So that'll be for when you play as Shredder and his guys as the goodies. And then these guys are the baddies. Hmm. Never thought I'd see the day. So there's Michelangelo. One of the things I notice about this miniature is he's actually got moulded chains on his nunchucks instead of just rope. So this looks a lot better. You could just paint these guys up in the standard way and use them as the normal models. They do have like neckerchief things, but I'm sure you could get around that. There's Donatello. Raphael. He's got a sword on his back. He looks mean. He's got a grimace on his face. And we have another Dark Leo. So this is a different one. Claws in a different hand. And he looks awesome. It does look like there'll be a fair amount of cleanup with all of these minis. But you'd expect that really. You get that with Games Workshop miniatures. So you shouldn't be too downhearted about it. At least these guys are already stuck together. Let's go to the villain upgrade pack. So this is the one that upgrades the villains to the heroes. So you get everything you need. There's no adventure booklet in this one. There's just... The good guys are always hogging the spotlight. It's time for the villains to take centre stage. This villain upgrade pack turns eight of the biggest baddies from Changes Constant and City Fall into full-fledged playable hero characters. So it gives you everything you need to play as the baddies. So let's have a look. Here's the turtles as the baddies. So you don't even have to play the dark turtles. Those evil turtles. And we've got Purple Dragons, Hun, The Foot Clan, Rocksteady, Bebop, Karai, Shredder and Baxter Stockman that you can play as heroes. So that's actually a lovely touch. I'll obviously be playing with the turtles first of all, but if I feel like it, then I can move to them. So we've got lots of initiative cards. I, I misread that. I, I read Bebop Genius, but it's Baxter Stockman that's a genius. And we've got ability cards, and they are not the bad uh, ability cards. So they're all for the good guys who are now the bad guys. Or the bad guys who are now the good guys. And I'm not going to take all these out, but look at all the different coloured dice for all the different baddies so we obviously need those dice to play as the play the baddies as the goodies so everything has been provided so you can do that i'm actually thinking this kickstarter was so worth it even though i've not finished opening all the boxes i'm not going to tell you how much it was on video because my wife might watch this but you can find out for yourself quite easily right we'll go for one i know's a wee one savage slash pack so I mentioned that we had Slash in another form. So there's a goodie and a baddie version. So there he is. There's the, the other version of him. The detail in his shell is really nice. That'll pick up a dry brush really well. So not much to it. Now we've got Loner Wrath Pack. Seems like every time Wrath goes out in his own he gets his head kicked in. So I'm not sure that's a good idea. So here he is with his coat and his cap on, and he's got his dice. So you can quite easily play as Loner Raph and just swap him right in. So seems to be very modular. You can just use all these expansion packs and just slot them right into the main game. Oh, these were in the box as well. So there's his card and his initiative card. We've got one to go, and it is the Stan Sakai pack. So here we go. Stan Sakai's venerable ronin rabbit, Miyamoto Yusagi, joins the fight alongside new versions of the four te Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, done in Sakai's signature style. So he's a fully-fledged hero. 
So he's got he's got his dice there, and he's got a lovely model. So there you go. Got a really nice bunny rabbit model, and obviously you can just swap these guys in, these turtles in, if you want to. Although the nunchucks are lacking detail again. No chains. Everyone knows Mikey's nunchucks have got chains on them. And Raphael's size. Wee bit bent again. We'll get around that. Leonardo with his double katanas. That's a cool model. like that one. And we have Donatello with his bow. Mm, nowhere to store it though. Now we'll have a quick look at the cards. So you've got Donatello, Leonardo, Michelangelo, Raphael, and Miyamoto Usagi. So here's Daisho, Taiyo no Hikari. So there's all his move cards, and we have initiative cards for all the characters that are in this box. So fully functional, all sorted, and another nice expansion. If I can get people to play this, I could see me playing it quite a lot. And we've not even done the stretch goals, so we've got loads more characters that we could play with. Before I do the grand finale of the stretch goals, I'll just show you what's in here. This came entirely separately from any other boxes. So this looks like X-Wing's secret move system, where you set your counter to the move that you want to make that turn and you don't reveal it until it's your turn up. You pop it together and you've got this. So numbers 1 to 20. We've got rotten ones as well, so I don't know what the deal is there, but yet again, we'll find out. So last but most certainly not least, here are the stretch goals. This is probably what everyone was waiting for. So this is all the additional miniatures for hitting certain targets in the Kickstarter. So 1.5 million, that kind of thing. So I'll pull out both trays, see what we've got. Get rid of the box. We've got the adventure comic, as usual. A lot more missions, using all, all the guys in the stretch goal box. We have two more double-sided boards. We have eight hero boards, which are just for organising your game when you're playing. We've got all the character cards. Pigeon Pete, Raphael, oh, that's a loner one as well, loner Raph. We've got all the same cards, lots of different types of dice, and even more cards. So that's us done with that part of it. Now on to the minis, which is a bit I'm most interested in. This is where the value of the Kickstarter comes into play over the retail version. That's um, The Stranger. Sophie Campbell Alapex, Pigeon Pete, Michelangelo's buddy, the Rat King, he looks really disgusting. I actually prefer the classic series version of the Rat King. And here is Worm, W-Y-R-M, looks like something from Monsters Inc. He's got a drink carton coming out his shoulder. We've got Flying Mousers, which are tiny again. Flyborgs. We've got Savati Ninjas. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly. We've got Baxter Stockman the Fly. Excellent. Kova, who wasn't at... His picture wasn't featured in the Kickstarter, so I didn't have any idea what that mini would look like. He's a bit soft on details, but I probably wouldn't paint him straight away anyway. He's not one of my favourites. Now, Leatherhead, that is one nice looking miniature. The detail on this guy is superb. From his scaly skin to his teeth. His teeth are actually some of the best I've seen. That's great. I will put a lot of effort into him. Assassins, foot assassins with their big claws. We've got Metalhead. I like Metalhead. And we also have Scratch. So I'm not familiar with Scratch, but I'm only in season four with my son. So I'm sure it'll all come flooding back to me. And after we finish the classic series, of which there are ten, I will start on the new ones. They're all 
like. All in all, that is one hell of a Kickstarter. I'm so happy I went all in on it. There's so much replayability in that, and I'm just really excited about getting a few of these guys painted up. I don't know if I'll paint them all up, but I'll probably paint enough up for a really good looking game sometime in the future. But I will do an unpainted playthrough very soon, so you don't have to wait ages for it. Unlike my uh, Marvel United playthrough. So, if you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe. I will see you in the next one. Thanks. Bye-bye.